So let's get back to what you're talking about. In other words, if everything is a vibrational matching journey, how do I focus on one subject and trust? Why would you? Why would you focus on one subject when hundreds of subjects, thousands of subjects simultaneously are already being answered from your vortex? Do you know what this vibrational reality is that we keep calling your vortex? That's where you've launched your rockets and that's where your inner being is focused upon your rockets. And that's where your rockets of desire are in their vibrational form. And that's where the cooperative components have gathered them. And so it is immense. It is enormous. It is powerful and it's all you're doing and it is for you and it is in the process of becoming why would you want to limit it in any way because you're still thinking of that like Esther was thinking about her to-do list she was so determined to get it all done and to show off for Jerry that she had lists and lists and lists and lists and lists and lists of things to do things that time would not accommodate but it isn't about the time it's that her feeling that I've got to do this that's the thing that we're trying to sort of help resolve within you. You're not here to prove yourself or to be tested. You're here to create what you choose to create. And you are unlimited in the number of things you choose unless you think you are. And you're less likely to feel limited in the things you choose when you understand you don't have to do all the legwork. You don't have to gather all the cooperative components. You've got an engine, a universal engine that is gathering the like unto the like. Do you know? Everything that you want, we know this is long, but it is good. <laughs> when you ask for anything, it doesn't matter if it's a pile of money or a relationship or an empire or a material object, it doesn't matter what it is you're asking for. Every single thing that every single one of you ever wants, ever has or ever will or ever does, it's for one reason only, you think you will feel better in the having of it. You think you will feel better. I want that because if I had that, then its absence wouldn't be nagging at me or its presence wouldn't be nagging at me. So very conditionally, if I could change that condition, then I'd feel better. And that's the biggest flawed premise that you all are running around with. You get to ask and when you ask, it is given every single time. But the reason you don't know that as clearly as we know that is because you want it to manifest so that you can see it and hear it and smell it and taste it and touch it. You want it to be immediately sooner than later sooner observable you want it to be observable and we want you to be willing to have an awareness of it without needing to observe it right now in the same way that the baby in the womb is not as observable as you're looking forward to it being now we know that's a little flaky analogy because you can't observe it you have ways that you can observe it and even the seed in the ground you could observe it you could dig it up and observe it but we want you to feel the ongoing evolution and becoming of your desires in a trusting not throwing sand on the trail attitude and then and only then will you be able to say with confidence I'm not limited I'm a pointer I'm a pointer who doesn't point in opposition to what I'm pointing at. I'm a pointer because I'm no longer having to prove my righteousness and somebody else's wrongness. We made that word up too. <laughs> like we made up the word awarenessing rather than observing. We want you to be awarenessing. And Esther's thinking, I kind of get that Abraham, but man, oh man, can you send more radio signals so that I can find more ways of getting it and explaining it and so then Esther remembered when she and Jerry first got together one day they walked in the apartment she kicked off her shoes like she always does and Jerry said I'd like you to pretend like you live with a blind person <laughs> so that you're not leaving things for me to trip over everywhere <laughs> and Esther thought I've never seen you stumble at all or trip over anything. It's like you have eyes in the back of your head. What are you complaining about? She's thinking. And then just to play with him, she went and got a yardstick out of the broom closet and said, use this. That's what blind people would do. <laughs> and he laughed because they were always playful like that. But Esther realized that that was a form of his awareness. And you all drive with more awareness than you do observing. If you were counting on your observing, 
you'd be running into each other a whole lot more one day Jerry and Esther came to a stop light they were going to turn left to get some plants from a nursery in San Antonio it was a big highway that now is a freeway but at that time it was a two-lane highway had a fast speed limit on it and Jerry was driving which lets you know how long ago that was and he was stopped and then his arrow turned green but he didn't move he sat there and in that moment and the seconds that followed it a car moving at a very high rate of speed came up over the hill behind them and passed on the left side of them and if Jerry had followed the arrow they would have been broadsided for sure he was awarenessing he couldn't observe it if he'd looked in his rearview mirror he wouldn't have seen this guy he was coming so fast and he was still on the other side of the hill but Jerry was awarenessing because your inner being knows where you are in relationship to everything you want all the time and is offering that knowing to you but are you awarenessing or are you complaining are you observing and not liking what you see and then pushing against what you don't like and therefore holding yourself in a place where you're not letting yourself be the cooperative component to your own desires see how this works once you get the hang of this it's only when you think you've got to do it all when you get into your vehicle you never think ever that you need to get under the hood and be part of the engine <laughs> I'll encourage the fuel injector today <laughs> or the belts or the pulleys or whatever it is that happens under there it's hard to know what's happening under there your vehicles are changing so much I'll be a circuit <laughs> and we say you are exactly a circuit but you're not going to pull any belts and pulleys in other words you choose what you want you point at what you want and because you are who you are you get to choose and your inner being and all those who hang around with your inner being focus undeniably without any resistance on what you've chosen and anticipate in a fullness that you rarely even experience in your emotional state someone said the other day when I feel this enthusiasm what is this is this my inner being joining me in the thought and we say this is you joining how your inner being feels all the time when you feel that elation anything between satisfaction and elation you got it going on you're not in the way you're not slowing it down you are allowing the momentum to increase and as Einstein said energy equals MC squared and you have the ability to play that out in your personal experience all day every day because it applies to you in every sense of the word energy equals M which is matter turning thoughts to things C which is the explanation of what the speed of light is squared which is 186,000 miles per second times 186,000 miles per second can you understand what that energy is can you understand that that's how thoughts are turned to things for you that you are extensions of that that you are creator you're not here proving worthiness just stumbling around just trying to find your way and follow some list of some group of people have gotten together and they've been going together for a long long time and they convince you that this is the right way this is the right way and all the other ways are wrong and we say really really you are all here for the benefit of one another and in the moment you stop pushing against each other and you don't have to wait for anybody else to stop doing it in the moment that you stop pushing against you will stop putting the brakes on your own creations and all of those things far more than six or seven or eight that you started to talk about all of the things that are in your vibrational reality in your vortex start showing you evidence we have something really important we want to stick in here so we've been talking to a lot of you and we've been talking about delegating things to the universe choosing what you're going to do today and then delegate to the universe the rest of the list that either you don't know how to do or you don't have time to do or whatever and so a group of people who have been engaging with us in an online broadcast many of the same people attending broadcasts and lots of new ones it's a really good balance but they began sending in videos and questions that pointed out a misunderstanding that they'd received from us where it was sort of like they wanted to boss the universe around on their behalf 
they started to sound a little demanding and that's all right it's really good to be determined and to be decided and to be anticipatory and to expect things the way you want them to be but there was something off about it and we said to them don't boss the universe around just softly make a request and then stand in expectation which isn't the easiest thing to do because if things haven't been working out for you if you've been observing the opposite of what you want then these words really fall flat because words don't teach it's only life experience that really teaches isn't it and so one day every day but one day Esther was sitting to do some processes that she likes to do and the first one she does every time is she chooses what she intends to do today and then she delegates in a second process to the universe and so Esther was in the process of doing that and she realized I am sort of bossing the universe around it's like take care of that 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 and the more engaged she is with us and the more she understands about the laws of the universe she was sort of getting bossy like reaching for things outside of her own personal attraction into world events and things like that and then she remembered we reminded and she received that the way this process came about we call it the placemat process because Jerry and Esther were in a restaurant and there was a placemat on the table and Esther had a long list of things to do more than she could do she was overwhelmed and cranky and feeling sorry for herself and Jerry said let's talk to Abraham which was his go-to every time <laughs> the restaurant was nearly empty they were off in a corner and so Jerry asked us what do you suggest here and it was the original macaroni grill and the white butcher paper on the table and crayons to color with and we said draw a line across the top and draw a line down the middle and on the left side write things I'm going to do today and on the right side write things I would like the universe to do delegate to the universe and then we said to Esther write down what you're going to do today and there were things that she really needed to do payroll was that day car payment it was that day four or five things that she was going to do from a notebook that had 20 pages of things that said things to do today that there was no possible way that Esther and 10 people could have done that day and then we said now put everything else on the universe's side of the placemat so she wrote with the crayon for a while and then took a pen from her purse and began writing she was thinking the other day she still has that somewhere probably in the hangar they have an airplane hangar no airplane but a hangar <laughs> it has lots of things in it so she began writing and this is the part that Esther remembered the other day every thing she moved over there to the universal side of the placemat gave her a sense of relief and by the end of that day she had done her things every one of them for the first time in a long time did she do what she said she was going to do but she noticed that several things that had been on her list contact this person do something about this had contacted her the universe resolved more in that first day than Esther did so it got her attention and she's done that just about every day since so the other day as she's contemplating all of this we really want you to hear this because it really speaks to what you've got going on here Esther realized that she gets to choose her preferences that's why she's here but when she chooses and worries she's not getting it done when she chooses in defiance of her rightness and someone else's wrongness she doesn't get it done and she realized that it was the releasing of resistance that that process is all about you see because when you set something in motion a thought if you don't send a contrasting thought into the mix the natural law of attraction will gather other thoughts that match it to it and as that gathering ensues so does the momentum so does the enthusiasm if you're translating it so does the clarity if you're translating it in other words when you don't do that thing that slows it down it doesn't slow down if you don't add the thought that contradicts it 
everything that you ask for. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next